and YouTube's live. So we have a chat that people will pop in and out of too. So if if I ask random questions, they're coming from viewers. It's not ghosts or anything weird. Okay, got it. But uh, yeah, so Deborah Voorhees, holy shit. I mean, I know you most from Friday the 13th, but you've done a laundry list of other things. And right. as much as I would love to just talk about the fact that you're in Friday the 13th, like we need to talk about everything you've done. All right. So I don't know where to begin. <laughs> so if you want to just kind of give us a brief overview of, of everything you've done, for all I know, <laughs> Friday the 13th was the least awesome thing you've ever done, in your opinion. Oh, there you go. It could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to start with my lemonade stand at five or do you want me to move forward faster? (laughs) If you want to start with the day that you were born and tell me about the weather, that's where we can go there. (laughs) No. um, Well, actually, you know, right now, as you know, I'm working on a film called 13 Fanboy. And uh, it is about a... um, stalker who is hunting down the women from Friday the 13th, his favorite characters, and um, um, with the intent to kill. Um, You know, it took me getting back into filmmaking. As you guys know, I was in Los Angeles in the 80s as an actress, and I kind of came back to it um, through, um, you know, when you have a series of things go wrong and sometimes it's fantastic because it just sends you in the place that you're supposed to. Um, I was a journalist for uh, well over a decade and um, worked with the Dallas Morning News, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And um, after I left that, I decided to go into teaching um, I taught British literature, didn't really think about Friday the 13th biting me in the ass over it, but um, it did. And um, school board, some parents didn't like the fact that I was nude in Friday the 13th, so I ended up getting thrown out of two high schools. Well, you know, by that time, I'm just um, really struggling and trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. And um, great thing though is it led me back to filmmaking and so at this point um i'm working on this horror thriller and i think we have an amazing cast we have cj graham we have tom matthews um judy aronson tracy savage ron sloan all of these people are from um you know friday the 13th i'm going to be playing a role in it and um, I also wrote it with my producing partner, Jill Paul Reisick. And um, so uh, in, we also have, I guess, have you guys heard of Never Hike Alone? Mm-hmm. But um, Vincent DeSante and Andrew Laity, both of them are in it. And um, so we have just a super strong cast and we're still hiring. And hopefully in the next few days, I'm going to have some really big news to announce too. Awesome. Yeah, I've, I've always wondered. I mean, I, I saw, well, your first film appearance was as a hooker, which I thought that was kind of odd. But I've always wondered because you hear a lot of like up and coming actresses and actors who get into horror. And mm-hmm. Sometimes they feel like they're just pigeonholed into it. And it's interesting to hear that you wanted to teach. And because of what you did in Friday the 13th, that kind of bitch right. in the ass. Right, right. And I guess I never really thought about it. About what time was that 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 happened? Um, How long ago? The the last school that I tried to work at is actually in the town I live in here in New Mexico. And that was 2009. Wow. Wow. It wasn't like it was that long ago. Uh, But um, apparently people are still freaked out over the idea that there are boobs in the world. And uh, I was like, yeah. They're boobs. We all have them. Men, too. Yeah, it's not like it was a gratuitous sex scene. No. It was topless. And, and it was... Oh, man. I'm trying to do math. I mean, I mean I was... yeah, you saw the my butt, but come on. You do, too, when somebody's wearing a thong on the beach. Well, that's you, you see more on cable TV now. I know. I know. I well, said I, I, what the just, Simpsons said. We were just like, watching a... a a news thing and there was the the comment made about how 
uh, Beto, who just ran in Texas for right. senator, uh, dropped an F-bomb in his conciliatory speech. And it was a, a, an F-bomb of pride. Yeah. About right. how proud he was of, of everybody who went out and voted and, and supported the things that they believed in. And right. it's kind of like, who gives a shit about that now? And, and right. who gives a shit about a lot of these things that used to be so taboo? But mm-hmm. even 2009 just seems not long enough ago that that would still have been a thing that people can't understand right. who actors and actresses are and right. and what playing a role is and that nudity isn't a big deal. It, it's such a weird yeah. thing. I could, I could, and, and while well, I would not at all agree way. with it, yeah, and while I wouldn't agree with it, I could understand at least somebody saying, oh, well, we don't like that you were in horror movies. Uh, right. Because at least then there's like, okay, we don't want kids thinking about the violence and stuff that was enacted in that film. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, if they had said, gosh, you know, we feel like you were supporting uh, violence or something, like you said, I wouldn't agree with them either. But because it's just a movie, it's folks. But no, that wasn't the argument at all. The argument was boobs. Right. It's like, no, nah, it doesn't make sense. I, that is totally, I mean, that is a, a school that I wouldn't want my kids to be educated in because I wouldn't want my right. kids to be afraid of the human body. I wouldn't want my kids to be the kind who would shun a woman breastfeeding her child or something because, oh, but there's a boob out. It, it right. Just, for me, that makes no sense at all. And it's it's another thing that I just don't understand why we have such a disrespect for educators right. in this country as it is. And mm-hmm. to look at these kinds of really flimsy excuses to get rid of somebody who loves to teach right. bothers the hell out of me. Right. I was very fortunate. Um, well, it was very difficult um, being pushed out because I had kids that I very much so cared about. I was teaching um, senior English and I was trying to get them legitimately graduated. And um, instead, the principal actually stole my book, my grade book, and gave everybody higher grades and passed people that were nowhere close to being passable yet. Right. I was trying hard to get them there, but I wanted them to get there for real, not just a made up grade that somebody writes down in a book. Yeah, because it doesn't um, does them no good going forward. Of course not. It doesn't it at all. And so, you know, I think the principal thought or it was actually an assistant principal that did that. But I think he thought that by doing that, he would get the kids on his side because everybody got a better grade because I was gone. But my kids fought for me. They went to the superintendent, they went to the principal, they talked to the school board. And while they didn't win, um, it, it was awfully, awfully heartwarming to see that. Yeah, but they didn't win. And that's, again, it shows a disrespect for the children. Of course. Which is, again, so we don't really care what the kids think. It's what we right. think as as parents and who we judge. And that. Right. And I understand wanting to protect your kids, but I just don't know what what? they're protecting them from. Yeah. That's the thing. And everyone has the internet in their pocket. You can find so much worse so much quicker on the internet. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. (sighs) I think it's weird that you got the job and then were kicked out after. Right. They never looked up to see who you were beforehand. You would have thought. (sighs) This is why I don't like people in general. (laughs) <laughs> i'm with you sometimes <laughs> i know it's like i i always find it weird uh to tell people that i do podcasting as a hobby and then also in the same sense be like yeah but i really hate like everyone <laughs> i just don't really care for a lot of people and it's because people suck and right this is, this is just another example of why people suck yeah That's well we also see more protection of child predators than we do of of actual valued educators, it it's wow. it's a it's a grim mess out there. But I mean, I, I don't want to dismiss that happening. It, it is to our benefit as people who obviously weren't in an age of school where you were teaching, but we right. get to see films and stuff again, which is fantastic. Right? Yeah. So in in you know, it's like all things in life. We can either move forward and change a negative into something positive. 
And, you know, that was just my choice. Um, I wanted to make things better in my life. And um, I was like, you know, I want to get back into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm so glad I did because I've been telling stories all my life. I love making shit up. <laughs> so <laughs> keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's, that's really good that you could take something that's a really shitty situation and, like, make it good. Right. Yeah. It ended up being a blessing. So, and I mean, I guess it works out for us too. Yeah. Here because of that. So, thanks, Super Nintendo Chalmers, for. <laughs> I did want to mention a Simpsons reference where Marge says Fox became a hardcore pornography channel so, so <laughs> slowly that I didn't even notice it happened. <laughs> Which I'd like to point out that there was Fox and then there's FX and now there's FXX. And very right. soon they will probably have FXXX <laughs> channel. Just throwing that out there. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about. I don't have questions. These are just things that come up in, in the squirrel brain. So I don't. Um, and I'm sure you've been asked this before, but I got to know what is it like to be the subject of that Wolfie's Just Fine song? Oh my gosh. I, it was such an honor. Um, I even got to meet um, uh, John LaJoy. Uh, you guys probably know that he was uh, one of the lead characters in um, in the league. In the league, yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, I was blown away when I saw that. I really was. I think it is one of the, um, it is an amazing video. It's beautifully acted. The music is wonderful. The directing, the editing, the color grade, everything was just so well done. And I love the story of that young man. I look at that and I'm like, oh my God, this is a movie. This should be a movie. It needs to be a movie. Because <laughs> think about it. The angst of a young boy growing up uh, in a Pentecostal type family that uh, brought all this shame and stuff and all the things that he has to do to, um, you know, get free of that kind of stuff. It's really, I think it's a fabulous story. Yeah. And it's, it was interesting to me. Um, Cause like I said, I mean, I saw this movie long before I ever, ever thought I would ever talk to you, mm -hmm. but it was in the same situation where it's like, we were in high school and what we used to do on Friday nights was we'd go rent a stack of, horror movies and watch them right so it's like being you know 16 17 18 and seeing a naked woman in a movie you know and when Corey and i started this podcast it was it was always a joke or it was like does the movie have boobs or not because so many <laughs> horror movies just have boob scenes you know it's, it's, i guess it comes with the territory but right going through the reviews of uh friday the 13th uh new beginning mm -hmm a lot of the, the reviews are it does what it's supposed to do it has creative deaths it has nudity you know it has all these things it's like so many people died and it is weird that that is part of the rating system for horror fans that is what they right. kind of look for it's what we associate with slasher fix and and right. good or bad and i don't think there's anything bad about it i i think right. it, i don't either but it is it's funny how ingrained those things are to us in that style of film that it if it right. doesn't include that then they they cheaped out or something and and i don't i don't agree with that i think it's up to the actress and it's up to the the filmmakers right but I, I do it yeah like matt's saying when i was a kid that was that was what we used to watch. We'd watch our movies, and there was an expectation right. that we were going to see a topless scene in it at least. Um, right. And, and that was part of the titillation of it. But it was always strange that you were going to get that scene, and inevitably you were then going to see that person be mutilated. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and that's awesome. what that song really tells is the effect that has on a kid mm -hmm. is – this woman who in any other situation, I would just be like, I would be drawn to her. I would fall in love with her. I create this situation in my mind where we're together. Mm -hmm. And then immediately she's killed in a horrific way. And I have to right. deal with all these feelings at once. Um, right. And yeah, that was the genius of that, that song and that video to me. Right. Yeah. The young man who uh, played that role, I, I couldn't, I don't think he could have been more than eight in it so that's pretty young mm -hmm. about it 
at eight, you're still saying out loud, ooh, yucky girls, but <laughs> you actually, you know, my grandson, he he definitely, he says, ooh, yucky girls, but I know he likes girls. Yep. He's, just, he's obsessed with them, but won't admit it, <laughs> you know? And uh, I don't know, you know, I think there's something really beautiful and sweet I can't tell you how many fans told me that I was the first nude woman they ever saw. And for a young boy, it was just, a, it's a really special moment when that happens. Cause it's, you know, the body is a wonderful, wondrous thing. And, you know, we have these natural instincts so that we procreate and keep making more babies. And uh, so I don't know. I think it's sweet. I think it's really neat actually. So when we were watching last night, we after we watched Lost Boys, my wife and I uh, put on uh, Friday the Thirteenth in the beginning, and uh, when we got to your scene, my wife was like, "I want boobs like that." <laughs> I'll give them to her. <laughs> she would she would happily take them. Um, I think my wife is perfect. I, so I obviously I don't have any issue with with who she is now, but it, it's still like that is that's the thing is that. A, a woman's body is some something that can be admired by men and women uh, right. for different reasons or the same reasons. Right. Uh, and yeah, I I don't know if I remember exactly the part that you played in it, but you were also in Avenging Angel, which right. is a movie that I remember watching a lot mm -hmm. on on late night cable when I was a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. You were on an episode of Riptide, which was one of my favorite shows right. as a kid. <laughs> So, I mean, I probably admired you several times over in right. my film. <laughs> uh, I would just say that I admired you in Dallas, but I only know that because I'm looking at your IMDb. <laughs> because I was I was born in 85. Um, okay. Real quick, uh, we have a question in the chat. Um, Schlitzy, which is oddly enough, he's he gave me my first tattoo. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, cool. Yeah, I know he's a big horror fan, so honored mm -hmm. he's here. Um, he's curious how will thirteen fanboy be affected if the Indiegogo does uh, comes up short? Uh, not at all. Uh, most of our money is coming from investors, so um, I don't think we will come up short. But um, I think we're going to do terrific. Um, you know, we only announced this um, two weeks ago. Yeah. So. Um, it's come a long way in a very short period of time and spreading things across social media is um, not that easy, especially with the algorithms that, you know, about 1%. So um, I feel like we've done actually extremely well. Yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate that Facebook has done everything it can to take pages impacts away from people because mm -hmm. you've got a very busy uh, fan page that you, right. you run and have people that are, are extremely active on right. um, and have some people that we know. Uh, Tori is a friend of ours and she's oh, big on your page. Right. Um, yes, yes. Melissa from Horror Geek Life is on there too. I've seen yeah. her posting. Yeah. And, and these are, these are people that we, I mean, that we were kind of like, Oh great. You know, you know, Deborah Voorhees. It's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I love but, both of them. But yeah, the, the, the social media aspect of it is difficult because social media wants its cut of everything. Right. And that kind of makes it difficult to say, Hey, I've got all these people who are really into what I'm doing. Uh, right. And I have this way that's supposed to be how I can communicate with them directly. And right. now I can't because uh, Facebook doesn't want me to, unless I give them more money. And even then it's right. not a promise that it's going to reach everybody. It's going to reach a higher percentage, maybe of hopefully right. they're perfect people. Right, exactly, exactly. So I feel like in two weeks, um, you know, uh, we've gotten uh, started to get lots of interviews. I horror wrote us wrote about us. Um, Tori's um, pop horror did. Melissa uh, with her horror geek life um, did. Um, you know, movie web picked us up. Uh, so I mean, we're making tremendous strides. So the, the main thing is just getting it out there and getting people to know. And, um, you know, we do, um, we do have an Indiegogo campaign, as he brought up. It's um, 13 Fanboy. You just go there 
and every little bit helps. You know, you get a thousand people doing um, thirteen dollars. That's you know thirteen k. That's yeah. a lot of money. So it adds up fast. So as people get to know about it, I think we're gonna we'll start having a snowball effect. Plus, we have some pretty amazing news coming up too. So, and yeah. the Indiegogo isn't as much. It, you already said that you you're likely to get your funding from outside of it. It right. seems like Indiegogo is more for the fans and what they get out of it. Uh, right, you give Absolutely. them a lot of opportunity to get things that they would not have a chance to otherwise, including getting producer credit in the film. Exactly. Uh, which is exactly. Incredible. This is for the fans. It's to get them involved and let the people that are the really hardcore, you know, Uber fans get in there and have a part of it. They get to be a piece of making this film. It's not just a matter of me going and saying, oh, hi, um, I'm going to go off now and I'm going to make a movie and um, hope you guys like it. I'll see you in a year and a half when we're done. So I mean, part this of the is balance. having them about, I want them a part of it the whole way. I'm yeah. sorry. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, part of, I mean, the downside to crowdfunding is that there are a lot of projects that are like that where it's just like give right. me your money and then i'll see you later i think i crowdfunded something like a video game in 2012 and i still don't have it it's not even done. right and you oh. know, they, they promised it in like 18 months and i'm like i get it that it's kind of gambling in a sense like right. there's no guarantee you're getting anything but right I, right it, it it and it i it hasn't stopped me i mean i gave i did i donated money to you uh oh. Schultz said he did too wow um, regardless of our relationship, I would have funded it anyways because of my interest in what it is. Right. So, thank you. Um, you. Could have given me the finger and I want to change my mind on doing it. So, but anyway. I would not do that to you. If I ever say <laughs> fuck you, I'll be saying it very nicely. You know me. You have to look at what, how Tina says fuck you. It's, an, <laughs> it's not a mean thing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's <laughs> the highlight of my weekend right there. <laughs> um but yeah and, and that's i guess that's kind of something that you have to combat is people people everyone's skeptical oh, because sure. people suck sure. people are terrible right. <laughs> but the, the people that you have involved in this film are the people who are part of the horror community that have right. each of their own fan base but it's because of who they are and because they've been so warmly embraced uh because right. they embrace it back that that's right. why you're likely to have people want to support each of you, let alone right. a project you think with all of you involved. That right. that's the whole thing is that I don't think anybody's going to say, "Oh, well, I think they're just going to take my money and cut and run" because they know who you are. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm out. Of, I had two questions. I, I'm out of stuff now. Corey, you have any topics to come up with? No, not really. I mean, I can sit here and gush over this person that I obviously <laughs> had uh, adolescent crush on. Um, but I, I think we all did. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's no, used to I, that. I think, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm excited because you came from something that a lot of people consider very lowbrow mm -hmm. in, in the types of films, the midnight films and stuff that you did. But you obviously, yeah. as an educator, you are not strictly lowbrow you you have an appreciation for it but you did billy shakespeare which kind of walks a cuss but you can tell that you have a love for literature and right. that that came out in what you do and i think that that's kind of amazing because it shows that what people think of when they think of horror movies is one thing and and people who make horror movies uh are capable of a lot more and what i get excited about is when those balls kind of break down and you get that additional stuff into the genre. Right. Right. Well, this particular piece, um, I think uh, the fans are going to really respond to and it. It kind of goes into what you're saying is this idea of I'm really going to be marrying two different worlds because it is a horror thriller. Think of uh, the movies like Hush and Cape Fear, that city that's there and then marrying it with, you know, the great horror kills that um, the fans love so much and, and bringing them the people that they love so much. 
I mean, the horror fans have been waiting for a lot of these people to come back on screen since they were in Friday the 13th. Yeah. So, um, you know, after fan after fan talked to me about this, it just made sense to me. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because I've been looking for a while for something for everybody. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited about it. Um, We have so much going on right now. I have an incredibly strong producer. He has 25 films under his belt. Um, You know, he, every single film he's made, including his first, he got distribution for, you know, I don't know a filmmaker you can say that about, you know, unless they're inside the studio system or have major bucks backing them. So um, I feel, uh, I feel like this is something that the fans are really going to gravitate toward, but I also think it's can it, it is has strong uh, possibilities for crossover appeal to um, a thriller audience as well. So I guess one question I have, because a lot of times I should say a lot of times once or twice, and I can't even think of a specific example. So this is really making my case even worse. Okay. <laughs> but um, sometimes they'll have a movie where with with this type where it's kind of have like a satirical humor to it Mm -hmm. so this this movie is not like that at all correct no it really isn't i not that you know we won't have a little bit of comic relief in right uh but it is very much a thriller it's very intense it's you know at least this is my goal you know the edge of your seat kind of feeling and you're going to be very um in invested in the characters. Um, so in one hand, um, Friday the 13th is that film that everybody goes and sees and you know it does. it's not gonna happen. You're not going to dig up Jason and he's not going to come up out of the grave and start killing people. Um, yes, you still get the booze and the scares and stuff, whereas this is something that could actually happen. Um, now I'm, I'm just I'm interested. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> it's just it's such like a cool idea to like. Have you seen Human Centipede? Humans? Oh, I haven't seen that one. No, I'm not saying like go run out and watch it, but okay. um, <clears throat> the first one. Obviously, you're familiar with the concept of it. Mm-hmm. But the second movie happens as if the first one was a movie you could see. So the guy doing the human centipede in the second movie is a huge fan of the first movie and wants to mimic it, and that's how he comes up with the idea. Same thing with the third, where the warden in the third loves the second movie so much that that's what he's going to do to rehabilitate. So it's okay. It's it's a really good concept to think of something as like someone who's so obsessed with something that they want to mimic it. Right. Right. So it, it's a really intriguing <laughs> idea and concept and I'm really curious how how you're going to present it. I'm sure it'll be great. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We just did a live chat in my group with Tom Matthews and um, it was really exciting. Uh, obviously the fans were just thrilled to be able to see him. Uh, but um, I think he the way he put it, I, I was really uh, pleased with. He said, it's, um, he said, it's, you know, intense. It has all kinds of twists and turns and it's nothing like what you think. <laughs> Which is awesome because I, so many horror movies you see now, and I don't know, I guess a question, a question I do have is like, do you even watch horror movies? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've I always do. wondered, is like, do you just end up getting into a horror movie because that's what you could act in or were you a fan? Right. Right. Well, now beforehand, I've always been a huge chicken. I really have. <laughs> I still to this day, I won't watch a horror movie by myself. I will with my husband there. And, but if he like wants to, if it's like in a really scary part and, you know, he's made much more laid back about it and he'll want to go wander off into the kitchen and go grab something. And I'm the one that's going, pause it, pause it. Don't you. <laughs> <laughs> so he has to pause it, go grab something. And if it's really scary, I'll follow him. <laughs> I'm like following him. Following him. I guess what movies do you consider to be really scary? The ones that scare me the most, honestly, are ghost stories. Okay. Like the insidious kind of movies, conjuring, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That really scares me. Oh, Hush scared me. 
A Quiet Place. Such a good movie. Real intense. Um, Hush, because it's so realistic. That It took me a long time to get the nerve up to see that. Um, a friend of mine, um, Nathan Barker, said, watch it, watch it. And I was like, okay, okay. Oh, I think it was Eric Walford, too. I would said, watch this, watch this. And I'm like, I saw the thing on it. I was like, oh, wow, woman's worst nightmare. You know, I don't know if I want to see this. And so finally, I worked up the nerve to watch it. And yeah, it scared the shit out of me, but it was so good and so well done. So do you, and feel free to not answer this, mm -hmm. but do you live like in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because uh, we moved to the middle of nowhere after I saw oh, yeah. that movie. And up until <sighs> now... I never thought about it, but it's like a lot of that movie, the, the, the scary part about it is the fact that A, she's deaf and she lives in the middle of nowhere. Right, right. Um, so Chris mentioned Haunting of Hill House. I don't know. Have you watched it at all? I saw the first episode. And, and no go? I, no, no, no. I really enjoyed oh, it. I'm I, definitely going to watch it. I don't. My wife uh, was not impressed, so i probably going to have to finish it myself, which isn't a big deal. Yeah, um, it scared me. It definitely did. It, it didn't scare me. I, have mm -hmm. you, I, I guess sidetrack a little bit, but have you ever like had a, a ghost experience at all? I have. And, you know, I'm one of those people that in the light of the day when I'm moving about and I'm feeling really comfortable in the world. Yeah, I don't really believe in that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it gets dark outside. <laughs> you want you to go before you know you're doing this. And yeah. <laughs> Wonder, but I have I have had experiences I cannot explain, and so, you know, yeah, I think that's why they scare me so bad. Is proof they're not true, proof they're not real, proof exactly, exactly. And I think that's part of um, like a, a slasher movie is I guess you can make an argument for because there are people out there who do right things that are pretty close to what are, are done there, but some of like the demon and the more supernatural and out there horror movies are easier to right. just write off because they don't exist. Whereas ghosts, um, like I, I've had two encounters very different times. Like I have a picture on my phone where you can very clearly see like a kid sitting in front of a box that was not there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and you know, that's usually what I, when people are like, well, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm like, then explain this explain this right i saw it i was there i was there with four other people oh wow no one else saw it yeah so you you actually you saw it as well as it wasn't just on the image on your phone then oh no no it, i could not see it with my naked eye i only saw it with a picture oh gotcha gotcha but, so okay. my my wife and i were down in orlando i guess i'll tell you the story but uh mm -hmm. we went on like a ghost tour you know, mm -hmm. there was a ha there was a hotel that they said was really haunted, so you could sign up, and we went. And um, it was weird because there was like a, a a random rave outside that same night, mm -hmm. so it was really loud, and there was a lot of lights, and it was kind of distracting. But you went upstairs to the top floor, which they now only used for storage, and um, they take like those flashlights where the back screw on, and when they're screwed all the way tight, that's when they turn on. So they they would turn it to a point where it was just loose enough where it wouldn't really turn on. Mm -hmm. And then they would ask spirits questions, and then the flashlights would turn on and off because of the oh. energy or whatever. Right. And the tour guide was like, "Just take pictures, take random pictures, and see what's there." You know, as we're asking questions, just look around and take pictures. And this is, you know, sometimes you'll get something. And the tour guide had asked like the age of the the, the spirit or whatever, and we were getting responses to it being a child. Mm -hmm. and that she just straight out said, like, are you a young child? And then the flashlight turned on, and that's when I took the picture. And it's at just a stack of boxes. And there was, like, three and then one. And in front mm -hmm. of the one, you just see what looks like a kid with his hands sitting on the box. Wow. And I'm like, that's fucking creepy. Wild. <laughs> yeah, they were super nice. Like, um, mm -hmm. I say that, you know, but it, there was one point where they had asked if if the ghost was malicious and, like, the lights turned on super bright. And she's like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And the other couple we were with were, um, they really seemed to want to like meddle a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we'll take you home. And the tour guide's like, don't fucking say that. I'm like, yeah, we're some weird shit's going to happen. But yeah, it was a really, it was an awesome experience. And um, wow. I've always been really interested in it. You know, I've, I've mm -hmm. had experiences shortly after friends have passed away and I've always wondered 
you know, there's gotta be, gotta be something else. Right. My, um, my, uh, Mikey mom, she was a nurse in the army and, um, she was, uh, stationed in Germany and she went to, um, one of those really big, like, um, uh, it was a big graveyard, but you know, the kind that when you go inside, I'm trying to, I'm running blank on the name, <laughs> but it was a big um, internment with the, and, like a mausoleum. Yeah. A mausoleum. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And um, inside the mausoleum, she wasn't supposed to take any pictures, but she did. And uh, she had a slide and you could see the, um, the casket and everything. And above it, Floating above it was a kneeling, praying monk. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe it. I, I've also um, felt, you know, I felt hands on me before when I'm wide awake. <laughs> and no one's there. This, um, I, I, I grew up like my dad is as fucking Catholic as they come. Mm -hmm. So I went to a Catholic grade school. My mom's Lutheran, went to a Lutheran high school. Um, <laughs> I dated a girl who was, I don't even know what it was, but they were kind of like snake handling type church. <laughs> and um, I used to have a lot of headaches when I was younger. Mm -hmm. This is in high school. And it was probably because I'd stopped taking care of myself and drank Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's like, well, come over. My parents are having a prayer group. I'm like, Whatever. I want to touch your boobs. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I, I shit you not. I have no good way to explain this. But uh, they're like, just stand here and close your eyes. And there was two people that were probably about four feet in front of me. And I had mm -hmm. my eyes closed and they were praying over me. And um, I just all of a sudden felt two hands on my chest. And I opened my eyes and they were still like four feet away from me. Oh, wow. And they're like, just let it happen. And so I did it again and I felt it again and it just knocked me over. And then I just laid there and I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> and um, couldn't explain it. I mean, there was their basement was full of people and there was no one anywhere near me. And everyone's like, no one touched you. Wow. Can't explain it. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't even think yeah. I did drugs that day. Yeah. No, I've had certain ex strange experiences. I understand. I don't know what how, what they are. I don't know that I, I can't say that I understand them just like that. You know, yeah. I don't know that I understand it. I don't know. But um, yeah, there are things we don't understand in this world. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same as whatever your religious beliefs are. That's that's your thing. That's not mine. Right. Um, but all I've ever told people when they come up is it just says like, just respect mine and I'll respect yours. I don't care if they're different. Right. Just right. because it... It's bigger than just you and what you believe. It's, I think there's, you, you, it helps you try to like comprehend what happens. And there's, right. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's what beliefs are for. It's to help people comprehend. And, you know, it, more than likely, none of us really understand it. None of us really know what's out there. It's highly unlikely. But, um, you know, whatever helps you get through the day. I think yep. it's okay. As long as you're not hurting anybody else with it. Yep. It gives you the warm, fuzzy feeling. Problem. Yeah. As long as somebody isn't um, uh, the only type that really gets to me, that gets me pissed off are the ones that are, you know, everybody's damned to hell, but them. It's right. Like, mm, we, yeah. We, that judgmental thing is doing for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We, we had, um, I, we were not sure if they were Mormon or mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the other one that comes to your door. But like we, because like I said, we we live in the middle of nowhere, and so I put I have like a, a motion camera over mm -hmm. our driveway, so I got like a video of them walking up to the front door, and um, those people piss me off. Yeah, because to you know, I I listen to I listen to a lot of death metal, mm -hmm. and for you to tell me that just because I listen to that kind of music that I'm a bad person and I'm going to hell. Right, right. You. <laughs> what was it when they come to the door? What you do is you say, "Oh, wonderful! Please come in." about my savior satan <laughs> we need a couple more hands for the goat sacrifice if you don't want to if you don't mind stopping it that's right <sighs> <laughs> oh, fucking people 
<laughs> I know. Have well, you guys seen the Sabrina, the new Sabrina that's out? No, but I heard. Um, yeah. I, um, really I heard. Yeah, they're getting sued by um, the Church of Satan. Oh, really? Oh, you didn't hear that? Yeah, they're, the Church of Satan is um, suing Netflix and mm -hmm. one of the other production companies for like $50 million because of the use of the, uh, the Baphomet statue in Sabrina. Oh, my gosh. Well, I hope they don't win because I love that show. It, I think it's really good. And that's really what is it the uh you know the catholic church going to sue somebody for having the cross oh please they bite it on that one yeah that's like that's weird to me um i don't know the full context of what exactly they're suing for um but but the, the satanic church these days is very much in the the judicial and political uh frame of mind because right. they're doing it to be the counterpoint to other religions that are trying to push themselves more and more above uh, and, and put the laws into their frames as opposed right. to other people's. Um, right. And so the satanic church is like, hey, if you're saying that it's okay to have religious idolatry here in this Capitol building, mm -hmm. then legally you have to allow us to put our religious idolatry up in it too. And mm -hmm. so that's where you have the Baphomet statue. And I think they probably have a copyright on their that's their particular Baphomet. And that's why they're they're trying to do it. Because if you don't um, protect your copyrights, right. then you can very easily lose them. If you don't show right. that, hey, this is... Incredible. I don't know how they would get a copyright on that. Um, it'd be interesting to find out if they did. Uh, so Beat says it is for copyright. It's not mm -hmm. defamation. It's only copyright. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because I think it's the same as the Baphomet statue that they built like down south. Mm -hmm. And But but like you said, like how do you have like I'm going to make a, a statue of Jesus and then right. like, copyright the fuck out of it. And if anyone <laughs> right. uses it, I'm going to be like, <laughs> well, else can use it. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. But well, I'm, I'm wondering if the, I have my buddy Christ really statue around good. here. It, mm -hmm. So I, I have not watched it. I admittedly have not watched it. Um, mm -hmm. But I just, I remember Sabrina from TGIF when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know. I hear this one's like dark. It's and Nothing real. like that. Because when I first put it on, I thought I was going to get, you know, it, it was one of those things where, well, we'll just try one episode and see how it is. And I was expecting it to be pretty small Z and, you know, nothing that I would really want to see. And I figured I'd get five minutes into it and be done. And then, no, it's really good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's the same guy who uh, does the Riverdale show, and he wrote the comics uh, that were more adult and horror-driven takes on these characters for Archie okay. Comics as they started to expand beyond what they've been for the last 50-something years. Um, right. So he's he's got a really good frame of mind and is doing something interesting. I think in my opinion, it probably works better with Sabrina and the themes of her character than it does for me, than, than the Archie and Betty and Veronica stuff where they've turned it into kind of a, a Twin Peaks kind of feel, um, right. which is weird because I love Twin Peaks and I love Archie comics, but right. for some reason those two don't really mix together for me. And it, it's probably more the melodrama of the CW <laughs> stuff too. Right. But, all that said, the Sabrina thing looks genuinely interesting and fun. Yeah. And they've got great people involved in it. So right. I, it's one of those things I expect to get to, but there's there's a few different things I've got to catch up on right now to right. before I dedicate myself to yet another series. Right. I understand. Is it just like a one season <laughs> thing or are they doing more? I expect they'll do more. Yeah. Well, assuming they can get out of this satan thing that that'll be an easy payoff and and again it's i believe it probably is more to do with the church has to has to defend their copyright uh just to I, you know, I would really have to question is it even i mean could that really hold up that a church could even be allowed to have a copyright on something like that because what if what if the catholic church decided to go out and i'm going to have a copyright on the cross well, they have to prove that it was something that they had control of in the first place. If, it would? If you, yeah, if you created your own version of the cross, mm -hmm. and, and 
Maybe. I'm sure that the Church of Scientology, if they have any kind of ideology, uh, probably has copyrights on all that stuff because it's yeah. Hollywood lawyers. Uh, I, I would yeah. think that more and more modern religions probably do that, but ancient religions would have a harder time because of how many years. At a certain point in time, right. copyright runs south. It, it's supposed to right. end unless you're working for Disney or Warner Brothers. Uh, right. So... Yeah, it's, I think it's as, a, as a judge, I would declare that religions can't have a copyright. I don't think I, that makes sense. I would agree with you. So it sounds like the copyright is on a statue referred to as Baphomet with children, mm -hmm. which is what was built five years ago uh, in response to religious displays on public property. Okay. That seems to be what was shown in the Sabrina series, and that's what they're suing for. I see. I think they would probably have to prove that maybe... I mean, because even if they make like 10 changes, I think it is, then they can use it. I don't know. It's, can't imagine them taking such care that they copy it exactly. Well, if you went and you bought, like, I'm not sure of the, the intricacies of this, but if you went and you bought a statue at your local Hot Topic that was mm -hmm. sculpted by somebody to be sold at Hot Topic that looks like a, a God figure, but really isn't. So someone went and they made this piece of art and then right. a, a, a person went and they bought it and they're like, oh, I'm going to put this in the background of my show. Mm -hmm. And then the the person who created it is like, hey, you can't just display my stuff in your show without giving me credit and without offering me some sort of payment. Right. And it might be as simple as that. It might be that they took a Baphomet statue off the shelf somewhere that the Satanic Church sells. Right. And that's what they're suing over. I don't know for well, sure. Well, then too, that would to me would even say more so that it, they, they shouldn't, because if they're selling the damn thing, then if you happen to use it, I really don't see a problem with it. You know, it, it, it's yeah. kind of like free advertising. Right, exactly. I know they should be just going, "Hey, cool, come join us." <laughs> right, which is strange. Mm -hmm. Like, like I agree. Like, you'd think they would be like, this is awesome. This is free publicity. But I don't know. Like, there's yeah. so there's a picture. If you if you Google the story, it'll show I will. Um, the bronze statue that was originally built. Mm -hmm. And then how it was or what was shown in Sabrina. And it mm -hmm. looks, I mean, it looks like um, like a white marble or a stone statue. In yeah, it definitely does. It's definitely not uh, bronze. Yeah, so I think that's probably what they're pissed about is that they just rebuilt the same exact statue. And that mm -hmm. was something that they played, or excuse me, they paid, it says about $100,000 to design and build. And I don't know. I, I guess if someone stole something of mine and put it in a TV show and it came mm -hmm. back to me, I... It'd be hard. I'd be hard pressed well, to like, ask you about if it. you were making, let's say you make mask and yeah. you them all the time and then one of them shows up in a tv show would you really be upset about her would be like oh cool look, now i can do free advertising and say hey they use this in the show i would be going cool they used it in the show because they obviously bought it from you yep i guess i would i would be pissed if they used it in the show and then re-released it under their own brand like what happened right. to jonathan Clinton and right. they maybe got back version of his song that he did on glee Mm -hmm. So Jonathan Colton covered Baby Got Back mm -hmm. and did a completely new version of it, but it's obviously, it's not his song, right? but the musical arrangement was his. Right. Glee covered Baby's Got Back on the show, but they didn't credit Jonathan Colton, even though the musical arrangement they did was exactly his. And I think even where he changed the lyrics slightly, they followed the same exact lyric. Gender. And so mm -hmm. he's like, hey, guys, just give me credit. You right. know, let me know that you're going to do this and stuff. And they just, they were fighting everybody on copyright stuff at that point in time. So they didn't give a shit. And so he re-released the song again saying, as made famous on the episode of Glee. Um, but it, it's still, it's a crappy thing to do when people take your stuff that you created and use right. it as their own. Because part of it is that the next person who says, oh, I'm going to take this thing that I saw on this TV show and make my own Baphomet statue. Is right. they're not giving credit to where it originally came from, they might say, "Oh, as featured on the Sabrina show on Netflix." And it's like, no, that's really right. that's ours. We made that. Uh, right. My wife's, and if someone stole her art off of her Instagram and sold mm -hmm. T-shirts of it, 
we would be pretty upset. And that happens to artists on the internet right. all the time. Matt exactly. is in a band and his band, uh, their the last couple albums have been kind of political. I, right. I say that <laughs> they, refraining they, from really like the, the last one ended up on like a Russian download website. I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's a little different. But what if someone yeah. that you guys didn't agree with politically started using your song as the backdrop for their ads? And, oh yeah, yeah. Because that yeah. happens to Art. That happens to Fleetwood Mac. You know, they're like, hey, right. please don't use our music. We really don't disagree do with that. that. Yeah, politically. right. Yeah, if yeah. Donald yeah. Trump used one of our songs as like his walkout <laughs> music, I'd probably have a problem. <laughs> yeah, he, he gets some angry thrash music from you guys that becomes like the I'm against the caravan coming here. And you're like, oh, Jesus, you know? This... Well, it'd be really funny when you figured out that it's probably written about him. Yes. Right. But, but he'll just say that that's fake news and <sighs> so you don't know your own music. And tell me I was wrong. Well, all I do is write the drums. I don't, whatever. Yeah. You usually uh, are wrong. Yeah, I'm married. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> That's how I like to play. Uh, it. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm really impressed at how we got to the bottom of this Baphomet statue situation. Yeah. Now I'm going to definitely check into it. Sounds interesting. Hey, if you like Satan and drinking, <laughs> a buddy of mine who's a glassware company has got a Baphomet glass. Just throwing <laughs> free publicity for friends of mine. Random press on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Drunk and stare at Satan. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I suppose we should talk about Lost Boys. Yes, this is where Corey. For the episodes, we would have to look at the stuff that was public domain, so we weren't putting art onto the episode from the movie itself. That you know, not that anybody's going to sue us. We're not making any money off of this, but they could come after us and say, "Hey, you know, that's it's not cool that you use the still from my film." We got an episode pulled down. We just reviewed a movie. We got pulled down for copyright infringement because they and didn't like our movie too. That was so weird. Well, one thing you can do is just mark it as um, that it's okay because they go really overboard on that stuff. Because if you're reviewing a film, then using images is not only okay, but it's appreciated and it's expected. Which, um, but you look at YouTube, you look at Facebook. They really get uh, pretty crazy about that sort of thing. Some of the things they flag as problems is pretty um, huge. I, you know, the shot of me where I'm laying on the blanket mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it, it was cropped. I mean, it was, I don't, didn't use like, you didn't see the boobs or anything that was cropped. Um, Facebook uh, wouldn't let it be used in an ad. Uh, because it was suggestive nudity. We're talking about shoulders. Right. So, well, you know, um, shoulders lead to arms, arms, arms lead yeah. to torso leads to boobs. Exactly. They all know where we're going with this. So, yeah, right. So it's kind of a strange thing, but yeah, you shouldn't have any problem like that. Just mark it that it's okay, and you shouldn't hear any more from it other than... I don't know. Maybe somebody sent them a note and said that and that who didn't understand about copyrights. But and I think you have you can use clips like isn't it 10 seconds? Isn't that what the rule is? Up to I, 10 seconds. I'm not sure specifically what it is. I knew it was a percentage in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So it was like three or less percent of the total. Um, I think it's music, though, but I think it's that three or less percent of the total length of the song can be used. OK. Uh, movies might be 10 seconds. Um, but the thing right. is, is we didn't, there was no clip to the movie. All mm -hmm. we used was our picture for the post and that was it. And that didn't even, that wasn't even shown. Wow. Interesting. Um, yeah. And, and I had messaged, so we used to do, cause, cause our podcast is under the galactic network. We used to stream under galactic network. And then when we got flagged for that, the entire mm -hmm. channel got banned for 90 days for streaming. So that's why we started our own. Wow. Um, I had messaged E1 and asked him, I'm like, hey, I'm just curious. Like, we're not complaining. We're not arguing. I just want to know why so I don't do it in the future. And they never responded. Oh, interesting. So I, yeah, I don't know if they just, like, it was an auto flag and, and that was... I think it was an auto flag. I bet you they didn't know anything about it. Probably not. Um, it and just from YouTube. In our, in our chat is our 
friend of the show, Beatmaster, who helped with he helped me with that. We were trying to figure out what to do. And mm-hmm. point out that if you try to fight it and you lose, like YouTube will just bend you over and fuck you two ways from Sunday. Mm. It, it, it's kind of ridiculous, and it's like we're right. trying to, we're trying to help everybody here. Like, absolutely, uh, absolutely. it was it was mind boggling because we didn't say we both liked the movie. We both gave it a favorable review, talked right. highly about it, and it was like, eh. which movie was it? A Christmas Horror Story. Okay, I'll bet you anything. It wasn't E one. I'll bet you it was just um, YouTube. Yeah, which is I've fine. Stuff online flagged before, and they'll say that this is copyrighted or that copyrighted, and it was like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. and first of all, I have permission, and I would just check it off and say, and and then I'm never bothered again. Yeah, I was. It just said it contains copyrighted material. I believe there was no mm-hmm. specific, and it never told us what it was. Right, right. And it's and it was kind of a situation where it's like, well, if you can tell me what is copyrighted, like maybe we can explain this or I can remove it. And we just right. don't propose anything. So now we go over here and we're not monetized because our you we don't YouTube is not our source of income. Right. It's just this it's the easiest way for us to record. Right. So it's yeah, it is what it is. And Without it's an easy it, way to share. It's an easy way to stream live so the people can can show up in the chat and be a part of it while we're recording. They can watch right. it. We want to be in as many places as people can find us. Yeah, uh, for their convenience. Um, even though the experience, I think, is better from the audio perspective because this isn't a show usually to watch. Uh, mm-hmm. And unless you want to watch the show is, for an hour, the show is cleaned up usually for the audio. Um, but yeah, it, it was. It's more of a bummer because an entity like YouTube can't get their hands into every single thing. So they automatically mm-hmm. have to block something to protect themselves, you know, from the years right. of the Viacom lawsuits and everything. It's just, right. this is the way that the business is now. It sucks because for a lot of people who do make a living on YouTube, they right. don't really have a way of getting this stuff worked out because mm-hmm. you send something in and you hope that somebody will get back to you. Um, right. But unless you've got someone behind the scenes who actually knows you and you know them and you can contact them directly, it will sit there for months and you just might be losing your entire income for that right. amount of time, hoping right. that it will get resolved. And often it has nothing to do with what you did. Somebody flagged it for no reason, sometimes mm-hmm. just a troll. Well, and that's the other thing. Someone, you, someone doesn't like what you say, so they flag it. Yeah. Right. Like, I hate people. <laughs> yeah. But if we really hated people, we wouldn't make content for people. No, that, now, I mean that, you yes. and I both make the show because we love making the show at this point. But we definitely at least started it to try to be entertaining. Plus, it gives me an excuse to meet people that I've seen nude on film. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I was so now that I have some some you know grease juice in me i was my family's in so my cousins flew in from texas to surprise my mom so i live about you live in new mexico you don't probably watch mm-hmm. football whatsoever um mm-hmm. but we live about 30 miles from green bay so okay. packers right. the state shuts down on sundays so we mm-hmm. went to my parents for a packer party because my mom has one every year so my cousins called me and they're like we're flying in we're surprising your mom don't say a word so they were over they came up to our house yesterday and i was explaining to them because they had no idea I did a podcast because I don't just walk mm-hmm. around and be like, hey, guys, I do a podcast. Listen to me tell dick and fart jokes on the internet once a week. <laughs> um, and I'm like, it's so weird. It's like I've seen this lady naked, and now I'm going to talk to her, and I have to be professional. And they're like, well, don't tell her that. I'm like, well, <laughs> get a bunch of beer in me. I'm going to tell her, and it's going to be a situation. And they're like, well, just don't make an ass out of yourself. And I'm like, well. <laughs> so, so, it's okay. Pretty much I know everybody who interviews me has seen me naked. Which is to figure out if I can possibly how I can get a dollar for everybody, and I'm wondering if I could charge a dollar per or just do- <laughs> well, you have all. two. You should it get just, a dollar you know, per. I'm picking one of each, and then so everybody sends me two bucks because I'll be really golden at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's kind of like a power move because you have to understand that 90 percent of people you meet 
probably have seen you naked and it is i know it's true it's like hey just everybody i meet i'll go hey two bucks i know you've seen it come on (laughs) is that at all uncomfortable for you not really no not really i do more um you know with um you know more like with dad (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh, so i guess now you're like how do your parents feel about this Um, you know, my, my poor mom, she, um, she took to bed three days after seeing it. She doesn't like to begin with. And then seeing her daughter murdered absolutely traumatized her. And she really went to bed for three days. I, you know, I honestly only thought about the fact that it's like, they may have been upset that you were naked. Not the fact that you got just fucking slaughtered shortly thereafter. No, you know, the, the nudity really didn't bother them that much other than, you know, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, no, it was mom had a problem with um, seeing me killed. It was really upsetting to her. Wow. No, I, I can absolutely imagine that. Portion. That, yeah, that yeah, makes total sense. sense. You know, I, I it would looks not. like you guys lost me somehow. I yeah, don't the camera's kind of going in and out. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Well, maybe it'll come back here in a minute. It's probably your cactus internet out there in New Mexico. <laughs> I live in the mountains. <laughs> so, you're, uh, so you're snow? I don't know. It's snow here. I don't know. The how pine trees. <laughs> pine trees. All right. All right. Like, I don't know what the mountains of New Mexico are like. I've never been there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful here. It snowed here yesterday, which is a little early for that shit. Oh yeah. I don't crazy. I I don't I actually don't even know. I live in Wisconsin and Corey's in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Corey moved back from California, so he <laughs> he moved from the nice warm weather to uh Lake Effect well, snow. Let let's refrain. Mm-hmm. I, I it did just snow this week. Uh so, my wife uh, was really into it until this morning when she went to go get coffee and had to wait for her windows to defrost. Uh, but we also moved back in the last month, and now all of the air quality where we live is rated uh, almost uninhabitable and uninhabitable because of all the fires and stuff in the areas. Or oh, not wow. even like close to where we were at this point, but just the smoke has hit the the Bay Area so bad um, that it's a constant haze over it. Uh, a few months ago, we had oh, had so sorry. Yeah, we had had fires uh, back in July, and mm-hmm, I got a lung infection that. from it that uh, put me out for about a week. And that was a year after the fires that people that I know lost their homes in. Um, so, yeah, it, today it snowed, and that made it a little inconvenient. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm so sorry. Let me just ask my husband something real quick. Hang on. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you can try and pause this? They've lost my, um, they've lost me on here. Can you try and pause that? Pause your TV show for me, please. Damn. Thanks. It might bring it back. We may just have, you know, our bandwidth may not be very high right now. I'm impressed with your use of the word bandwidth right there. <laughs> Throw that out there. Corey and I both work in IT, so we're, we're very impressed right now. Nice. <laughs> I know who to call when I have problems. <laughs> yeah, that's. You shouldn't have admit that to me. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like I said, we were. I was at my parents, and um, they they moved the Packer game from noon to three thirty. But I'm like, we still got to go early. Family's showing up, so we were we were there with the majority of the people for about an hour and a half, and never fails. In ninety minutes, one at least one person's like, "So I got this computer problem." Like, fuck, oh. man, <laughs> like Sunday, and I've been drinking all day. Like, do we have to do this? Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, I'm I'm the opposite of Matt, which is I I kind of long for that. I like helping people. Uh, okay. I and I'm in between. What's your number again? <laughs> <laughs> well, give, give me my email before we, before we hang up. Uh, yeah. So anybody randomly hits me up for, or if I see somebody who's struggling with something online and I'm just like, well, let me see what I can do. I try to always come at it with the point of view of like, I may not be able to solve your problem. Uh, and, and I don't want to make you feel like you can't solve it yourself, but right. if I can help, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to help or I'll help you right. find the place to find the right help. 
Sounds good to me. Just let me have that phone number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I. Hey, I'd honey, Deborah Voorhees asked for my phone number. Uh, take that. <laughs> Damn it, you got one up on me now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll ask for your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I will help you way better than Corey. I'm just throwing that out. Okay, yeah, this, cool. This is turning into a really weird letter to penthouse, but all right. <laughs> I never thought Corey and I would get in a fight over who could tech support Deborah Voorhees harder. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's currently happening. Whereas I always knew this is where our relationship was going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go tell my wife this story afterwards and she's just going to be like, shut up and pick up the dog poop. <laughs> she's like, You're a nobody. <laughs> uh, that was a fun little conversation. <laughs> I feel like there was a something that was really like like on track that was supposed to happen with Lost Boys. Yeah, we got to talk about Lost Boys. <laughs> okay, so we should, we should apologize. Uh, we didn't quite bring across what the show was to Deborah. Yeah, uh, I fucked the dog she... real hard on the description of how we did this. This is we can blame this one on me. Flappy ears <laughs> making nipples hard. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Deborah didn't realize that it wasn't a show where we were doing a um, a live watching. Yeah, like a mystery science theater three K. It it <laughs> that we watch the movies ahead of time, then we review them. So she has not seen the movie recently. On the other hand. It's Lost Boys. Can um can I interject real quick? Yeah. Deborah, are are you using um Windows or Apple products? Uh well, I actually I have both, but the one I'm on is a uh, Windows. Uh, okay. That, that nothing to do with the video. Beat Beat says that he hopes that you call Corey about Apple products just to fuck with them. And I'm okay. on board with that because I have an iPhone and I've had Apple computers, so you can call Corey and when he can't satisfy you, I will. Uh, I've oh, had right. Apple computers, and my wife has a new iPhone, so I'm Damn it. I'm fine. <laughs> also thinking about getting a laptop that I can put Linux on. So, dude, so funny story. I was at a gas station. Um, I broke the card reader. <laughs> I was trying to pay, and I wiggled it, and the power popped out, and it turned back on. And as it was booting, it popped up, and it said Linux inside. And I was just like, "Huh." I never really thought about what operating system a credit card reader has. Turns out it's Linux. Oh, that one was. Uh, and, and that depends on if you didn't actually pop a fake card reader that was put on top of it to scan your cards. So no, I mean, it was, I was I was in a quick trip, which is a very popular gas station in the Wisconsin and Minnesota area in Seymour, Wisconsin, home of the hamburger. Um, population probably like 950 people. So if someone wanted to get my card number there, they can have it and hopefully pay my student loans. Yeah. That's a very good idea. What, stealing someone's card number? No, to get somebody else to pay your um, student oh, loan. Oh, right. I know. Every year my mom's like, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, a $40,000 gift certificate to the uh, U.S. government for my student loans. <laughs> That's Whereas right. I'm just going to learn how to sculpt uh, satanic idols and see if I can get them onto a Netflix show without yeah. anybody paying me. There you go. All right. Third attempt at actually talking about the Lost Boys. Okay, cool. Corey. Yes. You're sir. up. You're up. Oh, uh, okay. Um so first of all, I, I think it's it's pretty well known on this podcast by now. Corey is not my real name. Oh. And God damn it, we're doing this again. The reason that Corey is my like name. 80 episodes for me to figure out that Corey was not his real name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we knew each other for a little over a year or two. Uh, I, I thought you I just never thought you'd lie to me like that. But my mom wanted to name me Corey Scott. It was just different context and different spelling. And the reason why my name is spelled C-O-R-E-Y is because of the Corys, because of Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Oh, really? And yes. And so it was around the time of this movie coming out is when I started going by Corey. And mm -hmm. that is exactly why I am kind of named for the actors of this movie. Um, Interesting. That is how big this movie was in my circle of friends at the time that it came out and mm -hmm. the age group that I was because I'm about I yeah basically the same age as uh Corey Feldman is and Corey Haim uh when he was alive we were around the same age so yeah so this was a big deal to me as a kid I was can I are you well you can tell me later what your real name is oh yeah absolutely it's Donald Donald um, 
but the yeah, whole name is fucking different. far from Corey. Like, yeah, he told me that I do, I, like whatever. <laughs> and it's not like it's Donald Corey or Donald Scott or anything. It's like it's like a totally different name. It, it's it, I, I'm a third. I'm named after my dad and my grandfather. So it's as far away from the Corey Christian Scott that I go by uh, is. And it's not like a, a secret. I, it's not like I'm hiding who I am. It's just that I've gone by Corey Christian Scott since I was 16. Oh, okay. Well, then it's your name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but there was contention when I married my wife a few years ago as to what name you were going to get married under and mm. if it was going to be Aaron Scott, if it was Aaron Cantwell, uh, if it was Aaron Temerity, because I was like, I can just change my name to Captain Temerity, which I've gone by even longer. Um, and Aaron Temerity has a really great ring to it. And and then yeah. she just <laughs> assigned her, her original name to all of her artwork and out cool me anyway. So I'm just might take her <laughs> <name of> Kelly. <laughs> But at any rate, uh, Lost Boys was a uh, was it 1985, 87, 87, 87. Uh, it was basically originally supposed to be kind of like the Goonies, right? Uh, which is good because it includes a Goonie, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be younger kids, but it's a play off of the idea of the the Lost Boys from. Peter Pan and the Neverland stuff about kids who never get old, but turned into a vampire story, which is a pretty cool way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Joel Schumacher came in, he wanted it to skew a little bit older. Uh, he had just a couple years before done St. Elmo's Fire, which was sort of like the last fashion of the Brat Pack of uh, those teen actors and stuff as they kind of like went into their not teenagers anymore, but being young adults. So he was amping up the sex. He was kind of uh, Dallasing 90210 ing it a little bit and making, making it more of a adult film than what it was re- still supposed to be. But it just still really rang with the teenagers. Right. And it made vampires cool mm-hmm. in, in a way that they hadn't really been portrayed as before. I mean, we had um, who was it? It was uh, George Hamilton Right. And as a vampire in a comedy movie and stuff. But this was like the cool teenager vampires and the subculture of goths and stuff bringing out in the portrayed in the movie is Santa Carla. But it was Santa Cruz, which is a place that I kind of lived at for a few years out in the Bay Area and uh, in California Mm -hmm. and uh, Santa Clara as well. But those places were like the big backdrop of this. So it's got that. That rock and roll culture, that goth punk culture, it introduced a lot of young actors who were just kind of breaking out of the scene. Uh, Jason Patrick, who came into this, was the one who pitched for Jamie Gertz to be a part of it because they just worked together in Solar Babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two Corys getting together, this it was the first time, but it was going to be like the next several years was going to be a bunch of stuff of them working together with License to Drive and Dream a Little Dream. And just going on and on, even to the point where we get to the sequels of this later on. Um, And their friendship kind of like is a big thing of what the culture is of this. Kiefer Sutherland was still very new. He had been in Stand By Me before this. But Mm -hmm. this was his first big role. And yet at the same time, he has not a lot of lines in this. It's just that his presence is so big that he's what you instinctually think of in the film. Uh, Diane Weed right. plays kind of the same mom character she plays in Parenthood mm-hmm. uh, a couple years later. Uh, is just terrific, but has that kind of mousy, can't control her kids thing. But it's still just wonderful and and loving and fun. Uh, the grandfather is cantankerous. All of that is great, and all of the characters are great, and and I don't want to discount any of them, but I cannot talk about this movie if we don't talk about the guy without the shirt playing the saxophone, which I think might have been the last <laughs> last for saxophone players and rock bands being cool. Because <laughs> it went right from this to Dave Cos and Kenny G, and it's like, shit, what happened? <laughs> Like suddenly we didn't hear Huey Lewis on the radio anymore. 
It, it just, it, it, something went wrong. And I think it was this guy, but this guy is really fucking cool. Singing shirtless on the boardwalk, playing the saxophone, just sweating up a storm. And that guy, I guess, played for Tina Turner, uh, played on uh, We Don't Need Another Hero and the, the Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, playing his band in uh, Leather Speedo all the time. So, like, he was the shit. I, and I just think after that, there was no way that you could ever compare to that level. Uh, so saxophones had to go. We probably would have gotten harmonicas again in, in bands before we got, uh, in fact, we did. We got Blues Traveler. Hey, two times, two weeks in a row, we got to mention Blues Traveler on the show. Uh, Please stop. <laughs> never. <laughs> Ken Ober and I believe in Blues Traveler. Uh, yeah, so... So the Lost Boys, basically the story is that this mom and her two sons uh, move into this uh, California town with their grandfather because the mom's recently divorced and she's having trouble keeping things together, needs a job, uh, needs help with her kids. Her, they're both teenagers and they're, they're kind of pains in the asses. So they move into this middle of nowhere place. Uh, I love the line of, do you see TV? No, there's no TV. Do you want the means? No, MTV. Like MTV was the thing that you had to have as a teenager in the middle of the 80s. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly the culture of what this movie is, is that this mm -hmm. is the MTV generation at its zenith mm -hmm. uh, before they introduce any kind of real world or other shows about... Uh, pseudo reality. It was when it was still music videos all the time. Also, this soundtrack was a huge thing, uh, but it's almost all covers of other songs mm -hmm. um, that just tertially kind of go with things. But the Echo and the Money Bunny Men song of uh, People Are Strange is just phenomenal and still holds up today. Anyway, so they get to this town and uh, the two brothers go out and they're hanging out in the boardwalk and the older one uh, plays by Jason Patrick Mike, he, he sees this girl Star and starts falling around, but Star is hanging out with these other guys who ride motorcycles, and they're all way cooler. And Michael knows he can't compete with them, but they kind of like pull him along and like, hey, you know, come come hang out with us. And he goes and he he hangs out with them at their their cave that they kick it in. That is a place that was uh, that happened because of the earthquakes a few years before, and. They convince him to eat Chinese food, but sometimes it doesn't look like Chinese food. It looks like maggots or it looks like worms. And then they have him drink some wine that Star tells him is blood. And he's like, you know, you guys have fucked with me enough. And they start to turn him into a vampire like them. Meanwhile, the younger brother is a comics nerd, uh, which they really try to paint at you by saying, oh, I'm looking for Batman number 14. Uh, there's only four in existence. No, there's not. That's bullshit. Uh, but he hangs out in this comic shop run by this couple who are just constantly unconscious. So their two sons take over the place, uh, the Frog Brothers, which is uh, like, I don't know what those guys were supposed to be. They constantly come across like we're badasses. We kill vampires. This whole town is full of vampires. Yeah. The comics that we were handing you to protect yourself. And then they're just like, they're full of shit. We find out as it goes along, they're just completely full of shit. They're not wrong. They're just not experienced vampire killers. It's like Mac and Charlie on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia in one of their adventures. I think that might be who Mac and Charlie are based off of as the Frog Brothers of the modern day. Um, but so Michael starts to develop powers and abilities, but doesn't know how to control them. Finds out that he's half turned but he and star and this uh, little kid laddie who hangs out with star who has the coolest check in all existence uh straight out of a my chemical romance video they won't become actual vampires until they actually kill somebody and david was supposed to be star's first kill not david uh, michael was supposed to be star's first kill that david decided and said to help turn him and that may or may not have something to do with the head vampire who wanted Michael to be turned as well as Sam, his little brother, so that he could um, entice their mother into becoming a vampire too. He wants a bride. 
And so it basically comes down to a power battle between Michael, David, the other vampires, and them taking these guys down, trying to get Michael and Star turned back into normal humans before they accidentally go too far deep and kill somebody and fully turn. And uh, it leads to the ending of the film, the big final showdown. One of the things that's interesting about the final showdown is that all the vampires, when they are killed, explode or implode or do some massive destructive stuff. The only one who doesn't is David, who is impaled on these horns on uh, a deer head. The grandfather's a taxidermist, essentially, not by trade, I think just for funsies. (laughs) <laughs> and he doesn't explode because the intent that Joel Schumacher had was to do a sequel to this movie called The Lost Girls a couple years later to have that character come back. The character did come back in a comic series from Vertigo Comics not too long ago, um, but they, Schumacher could never get the sequel made. It wasn't until, I think, 2008 or something when the Lost Boys sequel uh, came out, the first one, and then they had another one a couple years later. Uh, which actually brought in the other Frog Brother. I have those other two movies. It was my intent to watch all three of them, and I couldn't get myself to do it, so I watched Friday the 13th uh, instead. But yeah, that that's the kind of the gist of the film. It was more of the, than a gist. That was a... <laughs> Corey being Corey. And mm-hmm. yeah, that was an, an, an excellent an outline. I fell asleep, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Corey. Yeah, that, just keep in mind, he falls asleep when he's supposed to be paying attention to you. You want my phone number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and since I know his wife watches, he... I, I get it done so, quicker Deborah, than you, I fall asleep doing You're it. the one who suggested Lost Boys. Now, I have... A thought as to why, but you did say to us at the beginning, it's because you hadn't seen it in a while and you thought it might be fun to do. Yeah, it's yeah, I hadn't seen it in so long. In fact, and I was thinking about it, it's been longer than 10 years because I was actually fairly young at that time. So, um, yeah, I just, I, it's been on my list of things that I wanted to go back and re watch. Um, yeah, because it's, um, yeah, I just remember it being cool and hip and fun and, you know, all those kind of good things. I'm trying to, like, recall when I first saw this movie, and I can't, Mm -hmm. which kind of sucks for the the sake of the story, but um, I think it's a great movie, and and there was a lot of really, like, fun things that they did, and um, I think it was Twilight before Twilight was a thing. Right. Um. There's less sparkle, but there's still like that teenage like love story involved. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw it in the theater. I saw it in drive-in. Well, I was two years yeah. old when it came out. Just throwing that out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I was, I was not too. <laughs> I'm sure I was in high school. Well, you're you're what 27 right now. Yeah, something so, like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Add thirty years to that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll we'll just leave it at twenty-seven. You'll be twenty-seven okay. forever. It's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like I'm certain I watched it in someone's basement in high school, and it was like kind of what you guys said, where it's like, hey, you just got to watch this movie. So you watch the movie, um, and it's always been a really good movie. Uh, I think what the the biggest memory I have is that the people are strange. Now, Corey, who originally did that song? Do you know? That's the doors. That's what I thought. Okay. So when I was in high school. Big Jim Morrison poster hanging up behind them in the cave. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which, which makes sense. Now, I was never a Doors fan. Shocker, I know. Um, but the, the rap duo Twisted covered People Are Strange on their second studio album. Uh, which, if you listen to the show, you'll know my secret love of the Insane Clown Posse and Twisted. So that song came out before I would have ever seen this movie. So when I saw it, it was kind of, kind of have that, that memory tied to this movie. That and vampires, like I, I think everyone loves vampires because every girl secretly loves vampires, and I just wanted to touch a boob. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Deborah, I my connection kind of goes in and out on on these uh, with the current setup since I moved to this new office. But um, did you mention the fact that because what I was kind of leaning towards was Corey Feldman was of course in your movie, right? Uh, in a cameo, and then this is a horror movie with Corey Feldman in it years later. Mm -hmm. Was that part of the reason of choosing this or was that just kind of a happy accident? And no, it, it was, of course I was aware that he's in it, uh, but yeah, I didn't choose it for that reason. Just more that I have good memories from seeing it, even though it's been so long. Um, but I did, I mean, the first time I saw it, I'm quite sure it was in the theater. Later, I know I watched it on VHS, but I'm sure I watched it in the theaters. It was just, yeah, it, it was just a good movie. I remember really enjoying it. I thought, well, I've got to, I, you know, I just don't remember a lot of details about it. I want to see it again. I don't like, I don't think they make movies like they used to. And maybe mm -hmm. it's just because of all the adolescent memories that are tied with movies. But mm -hmm. I feel the same way about cars. It's like you see people who are driving like, oh, I got this 65 Mustang. And it's like, who's going to be like, hey, I got this 2015 Toyota uh, Honda Pilot that I'm looking for. Um <laughs> And I think it's kind of the same thing with movies where it's like, you know, Lost Boys came out in 87 and I got, you know, this was happening, this was happening. And you know, we watched, like Corey said, we saw it at a drive-in theater. Who's right. going to be like, yeah, I saw the fourth Avengers movie at a drive-in theater. Well, I might be next year. Do you have a drive-in theater by you? There are drive-in theaters by us. So that's, that's kind of thing. It's like that can happen again. And I thought I lived in bumfuck. Well, I keep telling the wife that, the one thing that Michigan has that California doesn't is land. And so when we go into the Myers or we go into the, the Walmart by us, they're just giant places and the parking lots stretch on forever because why wouldn't they? I do. Since you said Meyer, um, I do want to publicly thank friend of the show, uh, Mike, for sending me the 12 days of milkshake stout in the mail. Oh, excellent. I'm glad you got that. I have drank three of them already. I got it in the mail Friday. You've drank three of them. I just sent you the picture, I think, on Monday. I am a man of action. Jesus I said, You sent me that picture on Monday. I had that box of beer on Friday. Wow. That's what happens when you make friends. So yeah. I owe him a beer. I will get to Michigan. I will buy you a beer. <laughs> I don't think you're buying me a beer. Uh, no, no, no. I'm buying you a nice iced tea. I'm buying Mike a uh, beer. Yeah, if you can find, I can't find any like spectacular root beers out here. I'm really bummed about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I was 16 when this came out, and and so we were right at the age where we were going to drive in movies. My friend Johnny had a car, and we would pile into it. Or my friend Paul's Mustang. Uh, way too many people would fit in that fucking thing. So, but this was like, this was kind of a phenomenon at a breaking out point for the the actors for the Corys because before this they were considered child actors and this is when they're on that cusp of of getting older and getting cool uh cory Haim before this i think his last role had probably been lucas uh where he was a nerdy kid um and uh kind of like played second fiddle to charlie sheen uh for a girl's affections but it's really sweet movie and i watch it all the time uh young winona writer in that and Corey Feldman was in Goonies and, and things like that, but in a ton of stuff before that. I break up again? No, no, you're good. I was just uh, reliving my hatred for Goonies because of the amount of money I lost in a Goonies slot machine in Vegas. No. <laughs> Not now, we lie. Now, fucking Corey had to dip out. <sighs> True story, though. I lost a lot of money in that Goonies slot machine. <laughs> we never lost you and then you just ran away no i couldn't hear you oh that's fine. So what happens Whatever is the audio starts clipping for you guys and and as much as it's already once at a show with how much i talk uh i still like to enjoy your conversations as much as possible which is weird because oh. my wife probably wish i would clip in real life yeah well you know you don't have to just the one ball anyway Jesus, i only have one that works man you gotta bring it up all the works. time Works is, is a kindness. I don't think that's true. <laughs> You're saying yeah. the, the like I remember buying the soundtrack. I remember having this and listening to this soundtrack all the time. This thing was 
like it wasn't like it was my favorite movie, but it was certainly a movie that I watched a lot, that my friends watched a lot, that we referenced a lot. And at that point in time, it was just so clearly like this is what the time is. And this is when we're Not, I'm losing you guys. Yeah, I'm Corey's really. dropping out on me too. It's not only you. And I don't know what's wrong with mine, except for maybe my, my husband doesn't understand that. Um, <laughs> screaming. I'm going to see if I can figure that out. Hang on just a sec. Yeah, no problem. All right. She just went to see if her husband could stop streaming Netflix. So I've paused the audio. We're still on YouTube though. She might need to do what I do and like close out and reopen the link if she still has it. Well, I thought I could, um, like I can mute you guys as a presenter, but I can't stop your video. I thought if I stopped it and restarted it, it might. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna see if there's something that I can do to make it come back on. I don't understand why it's not on. Yeah, Corey, tech support super genius. If you. Like if you would leave the hangout and come back, that might restart it. Um, or yeah, you can just stop your video and restart oh, it. There, there we go. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. Now the gang's all here. Yay. <laughs> uh, you guys and your crazy backwoods internet. <laughs> You've seen my speed test, man. Uh, I know your your internet trumps the shit out of mine, and for some reason, I don't have problems in your. Yeah, and I'm sure it's more computer related than anything. Um, so yeah, so Deborah, having been in horror movies, what is it about a movie that makes it appeal to you? Um, and is Lost Boys like a? Is it a favorite? Is it just something that you've seen and you're like got an appreciation for? It, but it, what do you look for in something like this? Right. Yeah, no, I definitely would say it's a favorite, even though it's been a long time since I've seen it. It's just, it's a movie that I really enjoyed, but I'm looking for uh, something with a really good story. Uh, something where I really care about the people. If I don't care about them, you know, then it's like, you know, you don't care what happens to them. And so I get bored with it really fast. So I feel like I need to really care about them. I want to, um, you know, I, I like um, the scares um, to to a point. Um, I mean, to me, one of the scariest things in a movie is, you know, going down that empty hallway and there's that scary music going and there's a door open in the back and you know something's going to jump out. It's like, you know, waiting for that jack in the box to pop up out of there, you know, but, it's coming, but you're still going to end up jumping. But um, for me, mostly, it's a story. I like monsters where they have some depth and you understand who they are and what they are. And they're not 100% uh, bad. There's something about them that's relatable. Yeah. Did you, did you see the new Halloween by chance? I have. Um, we already did it in an episode, so I don't want to talk about it far too much, but... Mm -hmm. Did you feel like maybe bits of it were a little too predictable, jumpiness wise? Um, I mean, overall, I really enjoyed the film. I liked the uh, the relationship with the grandmother, the mother, and um, the daughter. Um, you know, I did care about them. I didn't want to see them hurt. Um, yeah, I found it interesting. I also liked the way it opened up. Because interestingly, having Michael in the um, uh, the insane asylum actually gave mm. a little bit of empathy for him. Um, it made him feel a little bit human. Hmm. Um, now, once he puts on the mask, not so much. But, um, you know, while he was in there, um, certainly. Uh, so, yeah, no, overall, I thought it was really good. Um, you know, the, um, you know, the scene with the... Uh, the light outside the motion light detector. Yeah. 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 That was really good and really intense. And, you know, they had some really intense um, kills too. That I thought, you know, the special effects 
effects and stuff was really well done. Well, I thought like I thought it was strange how they kind of masked a lot of the gore up until the end. Right. Yeah, they actually did. You're right. They really did. Yeah. Which obviously if you want to hear Ricori and I thought about that movie I listened to two weeks ago. But we're talking about the Lost Boys, I think. Mm-hmm. So the Lost Boys only really is gory in the kills and the destruction of the vampires. Um, but up until that point, when you see the vampires kill people, it's almost always happening off screen. At first, it's kind of like to, is it them? Is it not them? What's going on? It's a slow burn to get to the point where you start to realize who these guys are and what they actually are, um, which right. I think is good because the Lost Boys could have been about ever anything. And obviously, it's become iconic as a vampire movie. But when you, you, you went in the first time, you don't have to necessarily know that's what it is exactly. Uh, right. It was more of a rival gang thing between them and the surf Nazis uh, that they keep uh, butting heads with. And, of course, the authority figures on the, the boardwalk, which is why you buy into David's relationship with Max. If, like, Max wants them not to be in the video store and you don't realize that there's something deeper there until later on. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think I really do like that when um, a movie kind of moves into that slowly when there's a buildup. I mean, very often things that are off screen, I think, impact us more. I can't tell you how many fans have told me and believe wholeheartedly that they saw the garden shears go through my eyes. Right. <sighs> there was no prosthetic head ever done. You don't ever see it, but the sound effects are so powerful in that that um, you know you feel like you have seen it, even though you didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the reveal of you after um, of your character. Let's let's keep things separate. Uh, mm-hmm. Is is I mean, it is a payoff of that moment because you see the effect of it. Right, but your your mind fills in the blanks, and that's what mm-hmm. traumatizes us. Is the things that our our heads will paint pictures of are the right. worst things. Right, absolutely. I had one guy who was telling me. Um, he said, "Oh, it looks so fake the way they put the garden shears through your through your eyes." I was like, "They never showed that." Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny. So do you still do like, like a said, lot of conventions and stuff? I've only actually done a couple. Um, Sean Clark is my convention agent. He had been after me to try in and do some, but I had different issues. Well, one, trying to keep a job they were going to fire me in in the first place. But oh, um, I, did, I know, I know I should have gone. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I went to uh, Texas Frightmare and um, really enjoyed it, had a really nice time. And um, so, yeah, then um, I decided I was going to go to some. So I've been to two now, and hopefully somebody else will invite me. Well, you know, it sucks. There's one in Chicago next weekend that uh, Schlitzie in our chat, him and I are actually going to. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're... Um, I, I paid for the photo op with Sid Haig and Bill Mosley in uh-huh. oh, Captain man. Spaulding and um, <clears throat> Otis ritual paint, like makeup. And uh, I was arguing because the guy who tattooed Captain Spaulding on my back is the guy I'm going with. And I'm like, we have to fucking get this picture because if we don't, we're dumb. Right. <laughs> it's like, I have it on me and you've done it. Like, you have to do this. Um, absolutely but where i was going to it is like you should really next year go to this one and then we'll go out and what is the name of the one in chicago uh it's days of the dead day oh okay so it's the days i think days of the dead's in like five or six cities and then this is just the chicago one oh I mean, that's terrific yeah so next year put that on your bucket list that's what i keep telling people it's like come towards me <laughs> we'll hang out it'll be great for you better mm-hmm. for me Cool. Um, yeah, especially if you're trying to do those. So, models. since you're cool. taking other people out for beer, will you take me for a glass of wine? A uh, fucking course. <laughs> as long as you let me stop at three to five breweries on the way there. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that. Um, like I said, that my tattoo artist 
slash friend is the one that we're going with. And he's like, we're going to Schaumburg. And I said, cool, we have to go to this brewery, this brewery, this brewery. They're on the way. I'm like, here's a map. There's a burger mm-hmm. place nearby too. Um, we're just, we're going to do this all. And he's like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course I'll take it. There's, um, I don't drink wine, but I live not far from Door County, which is the mm-hmm. thumb of the state of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of wineries up there and I hear it's pretty good. Oh, nice. So I would gladly I bring some really some nice Wisconsin wines. Uh, okay. I, I don't doubt that, but I, mm-hmm. this is not a conversation. I have any sort of game in, you know, mm-hmm. um, at Door County is known for cherries. So if there's any sort of cherry and Door County cherry, I can, I can, reference that okay um like I, I was mentioning my family's in town and they were talking about a wine of the month club and i'm like i don't get it but okay mm-hmm. like i have uh, bottles of beer that i've paid way more money for than i really should have but to each their own yeah and right. i lived in sonoma county and napa county is right next to us so i mean i i was in all the winery areas and i had clients and stuff when i would go and fix people's computers on site where they would give me bottles of wine to take with me and i haven't drank alcohol in the last 20 years so it was always kind of like i'd go back and make my managers really happy hand the bottles over to them oh um, i bet but my some of my best friends out there are, are really big in the wine scene and and are always uh at the different places and stuff hanging out at les claypool's winery and stuff and are friends with him and, and a bunch of the other places uh the olivet road and stuff so i have an appreciation for that stuff um but yeah it, it's one of the things that was big for me out there was we had uh local weekly horror shows on the on the local channels so san francisco there was a a channel coffee that did a creepy coffee movie time i have one of the stalagmites from the show that i won after the show went off the air they they auctioned off a bunch of the props and stuff from it so that came out from california with me uh and now there's a new creature features out there uh, hosted by uh, Vincent Van Dahl and uh, Livingston as Butler and Tangella. And it's really cool because it involves uh, John Stanley's original creature features and all the the people from that. And they get all these different people who are from horror, or sci-fi and stuff to be on it. And what I'd love to see is more of that stuff locally. And it seems like someone like you or some of the people that you associate with Mm-hmm. in your local areas should be able to either be a part of that if it already exists there or start something like that because i think the world needs more elvira's and it needs more uh john stanley creature features and those kind of things um the we had one in detroit that i remember as a kid growing mm-hmm. up it it's always important to me to see yeah. horror movies kind of push forward to the next generation and be something that everybody gets to see it. and saturday night seems to make the most sense but i remember watching them sunday mornings or, or saturday mornings they would go from like playing the cartoons and maybe some ab and costello to playing a couple hour horror movie block right and i i think that that's that's something that with this generation obviously we can do the stuff online um the creepy coffee movie time people are planning on redoing the show and doing it as an online show now um which is great but your local community, there's probably a lot of people there who would love to be a part of that or have something like that around them. And when right. You get something like that as the center, then people can kind of gather and do something more with it and, and you get more involvement. Right. I think that's a great idea. And I mean, especially because you write and produce and direct and, and act, um, it might lead to more projects that you could be involved in or, or build more of a foundation around you to make those projects happen faster and more often. Right. Right. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. That would be fun too. So I should probably bring, bring, bring things full circle. Um, is there anything else to cover about lost boys? I mean, we could sit here and probably talk all night and, as fun as it would be, I think we probably all have lives to get back to. Mm-hmm. We'll just have you back again. It's that and we won't make you talk about the sequels. Okay. <laughs> we can talk about whatever you want. I've never seen the sequels. If that's what you want to talk about, then that's what we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. Um. So if you have no other points to make about the movie, which I Corey pretty much covered everything. Right. That's a good movie. Um, we rate it on a zero to five scale. 
Nothing super fancy. Just give it a number. You can give it an explanation if you want. As our guest, Deborah, you have to go first. All right. I'm going to give it a four. I think it's just a um, a fun movie. Something, um, I mean, I remember it as hip and cool. Uh, perhaps if I go back and look at it now, I'll go, wow, it's dated. But maybe not. I But it just, and I love the, um, the soundtrack and all of that to it. So... Uh, you've got some great um, characters in it, so a four. Can't argue with that, Corey. How about you? Uh, I completely agree. Uh, the four is also my score. I, I think the only thing really dated yeah. about it is the outfits, uh, the looks. It it was amazing <laughs> to me how much it didn't feel dated, and oh, the the jokes and stuff hold up pretty well. Uh, it is some of these people at their finest, uh, just like if not necessarily going well outside of the roles that we know them for and other things, just nailing those roles so well uh, in this. And I think it's, it's as far as shoemaker stuff, it's probably my favorite thing that he's done that I can think of, um, which is still kind of early for him in, in how, how he's going to get with Hollywood later on. And I just, yeah, I think it still holds up. It's also, I think, I don't know if it has anything to do with this, but it seems like the Echo and the Money Funny Men Doors cover in this kind of maybe help lead to the Doors rediscovery and the Doors movie coming out a couple years later with uh, Val Comer. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, of the Doors. <laughs> that make, yeah, makes sense. Nice of, of that era. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I gave it a three and a half. Like I said, it's a great movie. Um, a lot of good memories. It's It's a really classic vampire movie. It's a little dated in terms of effects and, and their wardrobe and, and everything, but you have to kind of understand that it was made in the 80s and everything gets a... I don't want to say a pass, but it, it's it's explained that way. Um, also, it, it's kind of a pre-scream in the sense that because they have rules that they understand about the vampires is kind of like what Scream does with horror movies mm -hmm. if you're if you're being chased by a serial killer in a horror movie they define those rules in that film and they define the rules of the vampires in this and they do it a lot in the comics but they're sitting there like oh well you got to do this you got to stab through the heart and everything and i think that was i don't know that a lot of movies had done that the same way before that they talk about it a little bit here and there but like they really like when they reveal you can't invite a vampire into your house because it takes away all your power uh, they're like, did you know that? And Frog Brothers like, yeah, of course we knew that. Everybody knows that. But it, <laughs> I, that was the first time I remembered a movie having those statements. And it is kind of a, we know what we're dealing with. It's a little tongue in cheek. And I think Scream maybe owes a little bit to that. Right. Setting the rules for horror movies. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Corey, can you read the out to or is it too far away? Uh, it's a little far away from me. All right. You can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at 805-328-3966. You can email us at pot at gncast.com. You can leave a message on our website. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Podcast of Terror. You can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Twitter, Google Play, or any of your favorite podcatchers. Leave us feedback as well. Somehow, two of our reviews on iTunes have disappeared. I don't even fucking understand anymore. Um, if you really want to, you can go to bit.ly slash pot review. Do the show there. All subscription options and links can be found at gncast.com slash subscribe. And you can follow the entire network on Facebook under the Platinum Network. If you want to give us money without actually giving us money, go to amazon.podcastatera.com. Um, shop like you normally would. We get a cut of that. Costs you absolutely nothing. Helps keeps this show free for you. Deborah, thank you very much. It's been pretty unreal. Uh, is an absolute honor. Um, Actually, that's something to bring up right there. Is if you go to Amazon.podcastatera.com, I believe it also will help us if you are renting movies to watch on Amazon Prime. Yes. If you're not already a subscriber, and Deborah has movies on Amazon Prime that you could be watching. Fantastic. Yes. I wow. so appreciate it. I really enjoy talking to both of you. It, it, like I said, it's an honor. It's it's pretty unreal to be able to say that I've now had a, a, an at length conversation with someone that um, is in one of my favorite movies um, 
this is your opportunity to hawk any sort of social media. Uh, as mentioned, Indiegogo for 13 Fanboy will be in the show notes, um, but obviously mention that again. Yeah. Yeah, and um, if you guys are, anybody's on Facebook, come over to my horror group. It's Deborah Voorhees Sheer Horror, and it is Sheer Like the Garden Shears. So, um, come on in and join us. And uh, gosh, guys, I thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah we'll you can. This. You can kind of tell the quality of of a person by the the groups and stuff that. If, if you have a Facebook page, the kind of people on that page and the people on your page are really fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I've been there just a couple of weeks, but they've all been really fun and you're great at inviting people when, when they show up, you say, thanks to you to these people for joining uh, our friend. PJ Starnes, uh, you, I just saw him called out on the page uh, the last couple of days. It, it's just so awesome to be a part of a community like that. And oh, thank you. Uh, it's certainly a place where if people are into horror movies, they should go and check out. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You, you have a fan page too, correct? No, actually, I haven't done a fan page. Instead, I did the group page. Oh, the, okay. I wanted um, a place where people could come in and interact more. Uh, the page is, it's not as um, easy to interact. So, um, yeah. Thanks a lot, Facebook. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. I just, I've just gotten us banned from all social media for the entirety of my life. <sighs> Corey, uh, where can people find you if you want them to find you this week? Uh, you know what? I'm going to take this moment to instead talk about my friend Crystal, who I've known for a long time. Uh, recently started her own podcast with a friend of hers called Totally Dysfunctional. Uh, it is already way more popular than we will ever be. Sure. And uh, for good reason. Crystal is the kind of person who is fearless in everything that she says and talks about. She's the realest person you will ever know. She is funny as shit. She is creative. She is smart. She is a great mom to two wonderful daughters. Uh, she's got an incredible husband, Mark, that I've known for years as well. And her show is the funniest goddamn show uh, because she and her friend do not hold back about anything. And they will talk as much shit as you could ever hope for about um they've got family members who have uh mental issues that they themselves have mental issues because of it they've grown up with ptsd because of the stuff with their family uh and how they deal with that and how they approach it and how they teach people about living your lives and and just everything they did uh the one of their episodes recently was about <laughs> getting yeast infections and and women cleaning themselves after sex and what that's like and stuff. And it was just so crazy because it was like, well, they're not going to talk about that. They're absolutely going to talk about that. And it's the <laughs> language that you can never hear. Uh, I obviously, a friend of mine, I love Crystal, but I love the show a lot because it's exactly what I would expect from her uh, mm -hmm. and then some. So check out Totally Dysfunctional. Uh, on all the different podcast places. Nice. Really got out of hand. Um, yeah, it should. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and untapped at Matt the Lifeguard. <sighs> you really threw me off there, Corey. Um, <laughs> you want to tell us about your infection? What's that, Corey? You want to tell us about your yeast infection? <laughs> non existent. Okay. <laughs> um, Next week, we're going to be talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 with host of the Ritual Madness podcast, Greg Chilton. He's also the lead vocalist. I almost call him a singer, but he only screams. A uh, Minnesota band called Outside the Murder. Um, so, yeah, should be a good time. Deborah, thank you. in that one. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. Uh, which will really, because I will have just touched him. Whether or not I'm supposed to touch him, I will touch him. Um, so I may be in jail next Sunday when we're supposed to be recording that for touching Bill Mosley. Um, but yeah, Deborah, thank you again. It's been unreal. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. But yeah, that's going to do it for another episode of the podcast here. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay scary, everybody. All right. I'm going to stop YouTube. Schlitzy, thank you guys for hanging out. Schlitzy, I'll see you next weekend. I will try to keep my shirt on while we're drinking. <laughs>